All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 2021 Kia Forte LXS. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four and down below is an IVT transmission. I'm excited to be driving this here Forte because it's been a little while since I've driven one and this is a lower trim Forte, something that's more affordable. Now, with that being said, this is not a complete base model. So the base base model is called the FE. So this car has everything the FE gets, plus black gloss sport bumper accents, 16 inch machine finish alloy wheels, drive mode select, 60-40 split folding rear seat, soft touch upper door panels, and it gets the intelligent variable transmission with Sportmatic as opposed to the very base model FE comes in a six speed manual. That base model starts at $17,000 and this here LXS starts around $19,000. And so we're gonna put it to some real world tests later on in the video to see if it's actually a good car for everyday use. But let's get back to that 2.0 liter inline four. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen. Nothing too crazy and I'll put the fuel economy up on the screen. Something nice is that this car does get 40 miles to the gallon on the highway, which is absolutely fantastic. Really, really solid for a vehicle in this segment. I would say compare this car to like Honda Civics, Toyota Corollas, Mazda 3s, vehicles of that stature. And this is right up there towards the top against those other vehicles. I'll do a quick comparison of a couple other vehicles, miles per gallon, if you are curious. This car is not fast, however, it is peppy enough to get out of its own way. And highway merging should be a little bit less stressful than with the economy cars of yesteryear. But like I said, paired to it is an IVT, which is Kia's verbiage for a CVT, which means continuously variable transmission. Kia calls it the intelligent variable transmission. Basically, there's no set gears inside the transmission. There's a bunch of witchcraft and hoo-ha that goes on in order to simulate gears. And that's how they help push that better fuel economy because it can actually change the ratios on the fly. There aren't just six set ratios that you have to deal with. They can really be whatever you want, which is really neat. Now you can get this car with a manual transmission at the base model, or you can get this car with a manual transmission up at the top tier, which is the GT line Forte in manual. So if you do want a manual, you can seek it out at either end of the price range. Last but not least, of course, the Forte is front wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. We have a couple of things to note in here. Well, in front of me, I have two main gauges. On the left is my tachometer and coolant temperature, and on the right is my speedometer and fuel. And I do get a little screen in the center cluster. I could change a couple things. I could look at my attention level, my user settings, my speed and digits, and I can select up and down for even more info than that. These gauges are very typical for Kia. You'll see them in pretty much everything from the Rio, the Soul, up to the Stinger if you don't get the upgraded gauges. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have voice commands, mode, volume, skip track, and phone options. And on the right, I have my pages for that screen and the gauges, cruise control, and that's pretty much it. I do like the overall look of the steering wheel. I think it's very presentable and looks pretty modern. To the left of me are my gauge dimmer switch, lane keep assist, and traction control off. Very nice that you get lane keep assist from this lower trim level. And on the door, I have my mirrors, power locks, and power windows. Moving into the center, we do have the infotainment system from Kia. And this is very, very basic. It doesn't get any fun gadgets or modes like Kia's other products. I don't get the sounds of nature feature. However, I do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is fantastic for a vehicle at this price point. Very, very nice that you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The backup camera is decently crisp. I do like the look of it, and I think it's very adequate, again, for a vehicle at this price point. Then I have the radio dials down below that for radio, media, seek, track, home, phone, and setup, as well as, of course, the volume knob and tune knob. And then I have the hazard switch and two climate control vents. Finishing out the center, I do have my climate control settings themselves for temperature on the left, fan speed in the middle, and where to send it on the right, as well as AC and defrosting buttons down below. Very simple, and I love the tactile feedback that these knobs give. They feel very solid, they don't feel flimsy, and they really click when you dial them in, which is fantastic. Moving down to the center, I have a little shelf, 
and two 12 volt outlets along with an aux and USB in for the radio. I like this area, it's a nice little extra storage area, which is always nice to put your phone, sunglasses, whatever it might be. Then we move on to the shifter. The shifter feels fine, it's the same that it is in every other Kia product and I've never really had an issue with it. They feel like they're built pretty solid. They seem to be pretty reliable and I haven't heard of many issues with them. To the left of the shifter, we do get our drive mode select button. So like I said, that is a upgrade over the FE model that comes with the LXS. So I can put it into normal, sport, or smart. And I love the fact that it actually puts a design up on the center screen. I think that's severely lacking in other vehicles like my personal Mazda 3 does not get a little logo that comes up in the middle. I just think it makes you feel so cool when you're switching modes. It feels like you're really a part of something bigger than it is. And putting it into sport mode, you really do feel the car downshift and hold on to gears. It does make the car feel a little bit sportier, which is nice because other auto manufacturers, it'll say sport on the dash, but you don't really notice a difference. Then we have two cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Kia Forte. And unfortunately it just barely fails. The bottle will sit down in there a little bit, but not enough to actually stick in there solidly. <laughs> So a couple of thank yous to the people who made this video possible. First of all, we have Cash for Cars. Cash for Cars wants to buy your car. Whether it's running, non-running, has a good title, salvage title, whatever it is, you can get a free quote from Cash for Cars and they will pick up your vehicle in less than 24 hours. Our next sponsor is Fixed. Fixed is a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor that plugs directly into your car and pairs to your smartphone. The app allows you to monitor your vehicle's health, it gives you a forecast of issues that might come up, and helps you schedule maintenance and find new parts. Our final sponsor is Conplates. Conplates is a suction cup license plate mount for the front of your vehicle if you don't want to drill one into your bumper. All three of our fantastic sponsors can be found in the description below, as well as videos explaining them further if you'd like more information, but let's get on with the review. Now we gotta talk about the seats the seats are very very basic they're cloth seats they're nothing to write home about and they're very forgettable however they're decently comfortable it's okay I'm fitting in here fine but I'm not overly happy about them speaking of seats however we do have back seats so let's go do a back seat review all right so we're in the back of the 2021 Kia Forte LXS and honestly I'm really impressed back here this is better than I would say the Honda Civic or the Mazda 3. Now my seat uh, is a little bit more forward than usual, but still I have about two inches between my knee and the front seat, which is really, really nice and can't really be said about the Mazda 3 or Honda Civic, so that is nice. However, the features and niceness sort of ends there. I have power windows, which is nice. I don't get a center console, and part of the LXS package is the fact that I do get 60-40 folding rear seats, meaning the passenger side seat and the middle seat fold down together, they make up the 60, and then this seat comes down as well on its own, making up the 40%. Speaking of all of that, let's go take a look at the trunk. All right, so we're on the back of the Kia Forte, and I do have a little hold here on the key fob, and look at that, it opens right up for you. Pretty decent space back here. I'm really impressed with it. Honestly, I was not thinking it would get a huge trunk, but this car is actually bigger than it seems. It's almost like a clown car. It's bigger on the inside or that mystical phone booth thing. Really, really nice. Again, I don't get any like features back here. No full-size spare, unfortunately. That's not something that comes in these Kias, which I really wish that they did, but that is a cost-saving method. So, that is the trunk. Now we gotta talk about the looks. This here Forte is finished in deep sea blue, and I love the look of it. I actually do think the Forte is a decently handsome car. I think it's decently aggressive at the front, and I'm not mad about it at the back. Last time I reviewed a Forte GT, I said that with some crazy aero and suspension work, it could look like a race car. I still do believe that. However, I don't think it's striking. I don't think you're gonna blow anyone away at a red carpet, but that's never really been Kia's mantra after all. So let's get to my final thoughts on this here Kia Forte LXS from 2021. Well, 
I think that it actually is a really good starter car. Let's talk about the downsides first. And really the biggest downside is the interior feel. There's a lot of hard plastics in here, not a whole lot of shape, not a whole lot of leather or anything like that. Kias don't do a great job at making you feel premium. Even their most premium, premium cars are still on par with mid-tier other vehicles besides the Kia K900. It honestly feels like a rental car in here, which this is a rental car, so take that as you will. But honestly, the interior of my Mazda 3, I prefer way more over this. But the things I do like are the infotainment. I do love the infotainment. I think it is very, very modern, especially with that Apple CarPlay. And it's going to give you definitely enough listening options for whatever you wanna to listen to while you drive, which is great. I like the look of it. I really do enjoy the look of the Forte. I think it's a good looking car. And while it won't snap necks on Broadway, that's okay. I don't really like the IVT transmission or CVT, whatever you wanna call it these days. I just don't like them in general. It's nothing against the Forte. They're just not my cup of tea. I prefer the older style of actual set gears. And I do like how affordable this car is, starting at $17,000 for a base model manual and working your way up to the mid 20s for like an EX or GT line manual. So am I blown away by the Forte? No, not even in the slightest. But what I can say is that it's an honest little economy car that you can buy brand new and it'll get you point A to point B. It'll get you out of the rain. It'll start every morning and that's all you can really ask for. And hey, it doesn't look half bad doing it either. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this helped either narrow your search with the Kia Forte or opened you up to other options. So please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.